All right, everybody, here we are. Look at this. We have the Jackson Kayaks Rockstar Medium side-by-side -side against the Dagger FX 5'7". And by the way, the 5'7 does not mean it's 5'7". That's 5'7 tenths of a foot. It's something crazy. I'm here with Matt and got his Rockstar here. So I wanted to do a side-by-side -side comparison of a... 20 year old so this came out in 2003 and you might as well say that's 2023 so try to show you guys the evolution of spud boats there was i i had a question is the dagger fx was it ahead of its time as far as design and features or is it just a piece of junk we'll go ahead and start with the specs the dagger fx comes in as lengthwise it comes in at five foot ten and 55 gallons in a 24 inch package width. And you can even see the width on the sides. And looking at the specs on the Rockstar, you're looking at five foot eight, which you can kind of see up there. And, and we know this because we got the measuring tape out and we measured it. But the biggest difference in this, as you can see, this is 26 and an eighth inch wide. So it's almost what? Two, almost a full two inches width in the Rockstar compared to that. And another thing, what is this eyesore right here? This is a volume pod. And what Dagger experimented with, they experimented with making an adjustable volume boat. You can look at the difference in the tail. This is a very beautifully designed tail in my opinion. This one has a slant going that way. This has a slant going that way. Almost d directly the opposite. But back to this thing, look at this. And if you guys wanna know what these are, these are thumb screws that you would unscrew this. So the theory was you would have one on the back and the front. Now, obviously there's not one on the front because they had a, a problem. There was a design flaw that when water would hit it, it would blow off. This one blew off somewhere and it's probably still in the river floating around. You get these little thumb screws like that, you would take them off and there's a spot where you would store them. So that's a threaded spot in the track. You would screw these in the track and it pops down in there and you see that? That thing pops off and now you've got a cartwheeling boat or a low angle kind of spinning boat. And these were called loop pockets. So the theory on that is, say we're gonna go for a loop either front or back, water would pile in this. On paper, this sounds like a great idea. You would go for a loop and water would pile and hit that and add lift. Where this is what adds lift, having volume, correct volume, not add-on volume. But it's like, if they would have ran this out instead of putting this pocket in there, not even done this, this boat might have been a precursor to one of the best spud boats ever if you think about it imagine if they would have ran that out and had that full of volume instead of trying to go that way but they were insisted on doing these loop pockets because they thought that's what loops that's what thought that's what caused loops same way up here it's a very deep pocket up here and what that does as matt found out we can get in almost any of these boats with shoes on i can't get in this boat with shoe on because look at the distance it's almost the same as like a full slice up front you only have that much foot room where up front here you've got so much volume it comes out. And when the, when the pods are not in it, you have these little thumb screws. These are probably seized in there over the years, but you have these little thumb screws that filled your insert in right there. I've paddled the FX, but you know, it was a long time ago. I have paddled it. This is an old boat. Shout out to my buddy, Corey Volt there. He's one of the old G dagger guys. I think he bought this new from the factory and I cleaned it up. I, I did the best I could on the outfitting and all that. I'll get into the outfitting here in a minute, but we wanna show the overall shape of it. And looking at the deck, you can kind of see the difference in the volume distribution in the deck. Wide cockpit on the Jackson compared to the Dagger. The cockpit looks like it goes about maybe another you got more cockpit than you do almost boat actually that's a big cockpit on these volumes very similar crazy similar and if you guys see these flames these flames are molded in uh scott henderson shout out to that guy he actually worked at jackson for a while after he left dagger he was a big motorcycle fan harley davidson fan american choppers all of that he insisted on doing these flames he handcrafted each flame and measured these gaps and made sure he made patterns and he worked on this for 
weeks to get these flames in there but it just kind of adds a little styling to it they never wear off you can see that's actually molded into the boat obviously they do nothing for function it's a lot of work you know what it is what it is i think they come out cool i'm a loving it what do you think of the flames matt i mean that's art so i appreciate that see yeah that and that's how scott that's how he was the dude was like an artist when it comes yeah. to much this was the old days of no cnc these like you got to think that was cnc'd out and that was like foam this was, was all thicker i wouldn't appreciate it more it looked like crap yeah if it was a molding graphic like yeah. that it wouldn't look as good but that is actually in the shape of the mold so you know a little crazy this was more of a concept boat for dagger so a 20 year gap between these boats and you can see there's innovation that's been added to refine this because by far me and matt both have paddled the rockstar five and would you not agree that's one of the best playboats to ever uh, for sure, like yeah. jackson knows playboats and i like i like the rockstar four the rockstar four and i do like the rockstar five i haven't done a review on it but i have spent some time in it in the uh, medium and large this one's a medium you can see another thing that they did they added width right here where this comes down to like a, a point and that actually hurts the looping of this boat because you want that width for load. So when you go in for a loop, it's gonna go here and then flip it around where this kind of like actually created more problems and it cartwheeled like a, I don't know. We can get into that when we actually paddle it. <laughs> <It's, laughs> so there's the overall shape of the boats and all that. Um, Jackson Outfitting, we know's great. He actually has the happy seat in there. What is that, a 100 bean? It comes, in, it comes with the rock. So he has the, it comes in the rock star, the bee's knees. This is a 2022, 20, this is a current one. So outfitting on this is beautiful. Would you not? Outfitting is great on that boat. Comfortable, tight. Let's go on to the FX. What's going on here? Oh boy. Well, first off, you know you have these pods and believe it or not, these pods, you take that back wall out. These pods are designed to fit inside the kayak so you can take them off on the river. But then what about the weight? <laughs> so now, if you had one on the back and front, you're looking at 10 pounds. Oh, what is that thing? Gosh. <laughs> he wasn't ready. Yeah, I'd say it's like, what, three or four pounds? Do you not think that would hurt you paddling? Uh, yeah, in a play boat, it makes a difference. Like, pick the boat up now. Like, just feel of it. Very light. 31 on the, the Rockstar and 33. So they're both right a little over 30 pounds, which is super light. And I actually think this might be lighter than 30 something pounds. It was very light without the pods. The pods add another 10 pounds to it. Um, the bow pod was massive. The bow pod was massive. I'll throw a picture up now of, the, of what it looks like with the pods on it so you guys can see what that damn thing looks like with these pods. The bow covered this whole area up, up there and it was terrible. It added a lot of weight and it didn't function well. Like I said, this boat's old boat. It's been sitting somewhere for 17 years. I cleaned it up. It's missing this plastic dog bone. They had something called a dog bone that looked like a, and that's what these two screws are here. It screwed in and held a wall and there was a piece of plastic that went from here to here. And I just, I just, you can see what I did. I cut a piece of foam just so we could paddle it, stuck in there and it actually bolted through right there. Cam locks, cams work. They found out, you know, they get wet. You have to kind of like constantly tie knots in them so they don't, the webbing gets wet and it slips on you. But it's like, these just bolt into a, this is all roto molded. These are not thermoform, which all, also that adds a lot of weight. So there was a mold that made each one of these and they just cut it and then put it in there and it's held on by screws right here you can see it goes along that slot and having a slot up here if you guys look at your dagger boats now there's a reason these are almost all the way back if you slot here and you slot here and you slot here and you lean back i don't care how tight it is this whole thigh brace just slides back with you figured out at daggers put a series of holes up here that's why at dagger now you have to remove that bolt and these are on slots just so you know a fun fact that you want to know but then you go to this what in the heck is this now, that's a good question. I know you guys are asking. You're like, yeah, what is that? Well, that might be one of the dumbest thing in, to ever be added to a kayak. So when you mount things off of a track, you've got an issue. How do you keep the track from sliding around? Well, Jackson figured it out. Jackson made their track really wide. They put fiberglass beams in there. There's fiberglass V-shaped beams for structure. And guess what? This is taped down super strong tape that bonds to plastic this at the time no one had figured that out yet so we had a guy in the factory he said what if we just mold an insert into the hull of the boat 
and you're thinking, wait a minute, what does that mean? That means you got a hole all the way through the hull. I could take this screw out and there's a hole right there. The water will just blow right out of that hole, right there and right there. So you're like, how do you get around that? Well, you know what we do? You see these things? Let's put a cap in it. <laughs> the dumbest thing. Obviously, this one's held up pretty good because he hasn't paddled it much. Maybe there's an obvious reason he hasn't paddled it much. What is that? Well, that, if I take that out and I take that out, that goes all the way down into the kayak. So this had a track that was screwed into the boat and eventually Dagger started welding them to the boat, which is another issue. And thank God they got rid of that. You guys might see weld marks here and here. They welded them in that. I know it sounds crazy, but it's things like that in manufacturing that like they really always try to figure out how to get around to mount a track down where it wouldn't move. So yeah, you guys comment if you had a boat with this in there because Dagger was the only company, fortunately, the only company ever to do that. They molded the inserts and it, if you guys don't know what an insert is, it's the same thing that holds in like security bars. It's done inside the process when you're molding and it forms plastic around it, but there's a hole that goes all the way through the middle. And obviously these are sealed. You couldn't seal it here because it was in the hull. These are sealed on the back. That couldn't be sealed because it's a reversed insert. It's, it, it was a complicated thing. And another thing, it, the holes are kind of thin. These inserts would break off. Could you imagine if you kick this real hard and the whole insert broke? Now you got a hole that big in each side. So yeah, very bad idea. You know, I get it. At the time, you're trying to figure out a way of locking all this outfitting down. And it's hard to cut. It actually added oil canning in it. You can see where it pulled it in right here because it couldn't get pushed out like like a fall. It doesn't go with the track. I know, I know, probably enough about the inserts. All right, moving on from the inserts and hole. What's this big bulb, you might ask? Matt didn't know what this thing was. He's like, what did that do? And I was like, well, believe, believe it or not, this was around the time, if anybody remembers the Reebok pump shoes, just pump it up. So there was these shoes where you would, at Reebok, where you would actually pump the tongue. That's where the concept of this came from. This is a system. You turn this knob here, and then this has a little bit of water. Can you, I don't know if you can see that in the camera. The hip pads are inflating. This is an inflatable hip pad. It just goes in so there's no shims. You don't shim it out. You can adjust it. You, uh, you can barely see where the cord's coming through the seat. This goes in and there's a, there's a tube that runs in here and runs up through there, runs up through there. Problem number two, these tubes would blow off everywhere. They didn't stay on there, but what I did, I super glued this one on there because I knew it was gonna fly off. But this has a leak inside the pad, so it comes down. On paper, this sounds like a great idea, but when it got del in delivery, it was terrible. Bad idea on that. It's on the, and it's a plastic backing that like holds that on. Backband was pretty good, big wide backband, very cushiony into cam locks. It didn't have bungee here. It had a, um, but I added this by the way, so you can see where all that is. And I just tied this bungee in there just to keep the backband in place because that's real important when you're play boating. Um, it had foam blocks that went here. I added all of that. And to adjust the seat, super easy, almost Jackson easy. You just pull that off, move the seat forward back wherever you wanted to go. But you know, in a boat like this, it didn't matter that much anyway. Staying centers about where you'd wanna be. This screw just basically held that on. That screw holds that so the back band doesn't cut into your side. Didn't work well because right here's where it cut into my side anyway, and it ended up hurting anyway. Uh, these are all obviously that. And then the, this is where the, the seat adjustment screw went into right there. Anything else? You got anything to add on this outfitting or hey shape? Man, I like the, I like to pump the hip pads. If anybody knows a good way to do that without a break in, in, a, in a new modern boat, I think it's pretty cool. He thinks we could revisit that. I think I like it. Small people, I have to put like four shims in here. That'd be awesome to have something adjusted. And that was the whole idea. It was going to be a shimless adjustment. That's like having a whole bag of shims with you at all times. A big bag of shims right between your legs. And you just pump it up and then listen. Oh, that sounds good, don't it? And that even square you. Look at that. Dude, that has like a little geyser out of it. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Um, we're going to roll it over and check out the holes. Sidewalls, we can hold it up on its side. One of the things I had seen 
when I first seen the Rockstar 5, I love the way they did that cutout right here. Number one, it adds some st rigid, look how rigid that is. So when I'm mashing that, I don't know if you guys can see it, it's not caving in at all. And then you mash that, like if you wanna try to mash on each one of those, like just mash down really hard. It has way, way more structure it, there. That bends easily. So when you turn for like a side blunt or big side move, you've got a ridge that will hold you in line. It doesn't let the boat slip when it's on its side. And it makes total sense. After seeing this, I was like, that's, that's another thing that how great Jackson is on play boat design is when this thing's on its side, it holds that line where this one would slip on you. So I go to like make a big initiated move. Imagine turning to your side. It would, it would have the tendency to slip. This one will lock in and line up. And it also adds some, uh, makes it more rigid in this whole area. Woo, look at that big flat spoon right there, baby. <laughs> look at that. Pretty different the philosophies, wouldn't you think? Yeah, they, that's where you really see the difference. Yeah, so you can see there's not a lot of rocker in this boat. You can see it's rockered about the same here to here, but watch what it does. This one goes almost straighter out where that one kind of curves a little better in its curvature. This edge is kind of that, like I was saying, it's kind of like that normal dagger edge. It has a rail that runs there gaps out and then another kind of drop chime that goes here and drops off very sharply and this boat spins really good it spins on a dime this thing can just spin for days it's small length and how flat that profile is and it doesn't have like a rail here to here but overall that's a thousand times better play boat in my opinion and, and you guys i know the the dagger fx had a love hate i have met people that absolutely love this boat and I have met people and I know a lot of people personally like myself that absolutely hated this boat. So there, there is a love hate with this kayak, but I don't know if it's the worst play boat ever because it does some things that are crazy. And you can kind of look at it. It does some things that were really ahead of its time where I, I'd always said that for four to five years after this came out, when I started seeing the All-Star, not the Rockstar, when I seen the All-Star hit, what if we would have filled that gap in right here and not done a pod and just filled that gap in there and filled that gap in there and went a little wider, you might have had one of the better playboats in history, in my opinion. What, what do you think? Yeah. Just time, looking especially. over it. For 20 years ago? But you guys leave in the comments below if you've had any experience with the Dagger FX 5.7. There was supposed to be another size that never made it, obviously. This ran for nine months and then they canceled it. I think they sold tens of them. They sold tens of them. So the mold was never paid for probably. <laughs> so yeah, the boat was killed pretty early. This was kind of on that borderline of the slicey boat era. If you guys see any boats from 2003, you don't see a lot of spud boats, do you? You see triple X's, you see ultra fuges, you centrifuge, you see all those type. Prions had a lot of slicey boats. So you don't see a lot of boats like this from that era. So I think it was a little bit ahead of its time. You guys leave in the comments below what you think of this boat. If you think it really was ahead of its time, if it's a piece of junk that should be taken to the woodshed and deleted. That's all I got today, guys, on the Dagger FX and the Jackson Rockstar 5, just so we know. Uh, big shout out to my buddy Matt here, right here, man. Yeah, man. He, um, this is his rock star. We, we're up here. We're doing one of his little local runs. But yeah, let's um, let's get on the water and let's let's get out of here. FX baby, look at that. FX. I don't even know. I think that means. What does FX mean? Sucks. <laughs> well, yeah. And I'll uh, see you guys on the water. Woo.